to see you here this morning. We welcome you in the name of the Lord, because this is the Lord's house. Uh, we know it's a school of the back, uh, and we know buildings are just buildings. But this place has been dedicated to the gospel, and it's a, a place where we're going to lift up the Lord Jesus this morning. So it's good to be here. Now you're looking here, believe it or not, at the real license, L L. M. If you can work that one out, you're very good. And uh, we've all been real licensed. Uh, uh, Jeff at the end there. I mean, would you have a someone like him leading you? <laughs> this is it. Well, we've got Jeff and we've got Duncan here. Uh, we've all been real licensed for up to uh, three years. So that was yesterday down at the, down at the cathedral. So, We've got to be on our best behavior, lads. I know that's difficult for some of us, <laughs> but uh, it's good to see you and it's good to be here in the house of God. So we do both. Uh, let's sing our first song, shall we? Our only hymn. Shine, Jesus, shine. One of Graham Kendrick's favorite songs. <laughs> Shine on me. 
the Father's glory, praise to your name, God of our start our service this morning. May our faces display your likeness. Wouldn't it be lovely if people could recognize us as children of God uh, because of the way and by ourselves, because of the way we treat one another, etc. It's a lovely song. We come to the time where we say sorry to God and this time we're looking to our own hearts and uh, we, uh, we confess the things that we do know. So we'll all say together this morning, we'll read the uh, white uh, and we'll join in with the yellow as well. Okay? We're not alone in Jerry, time, home, vacation, as you want us to be. Father, among us, please forgive us. We say, think, and do things which hurt others and hurt you. Father, in your mercy, please, please forgive, forgive us. us. We find it difficult to put up with and forgive others. Father, in your mercy, please, please forgive, forgive us. us. We don't include you in all that we do. Father, in your mercy, please, please forgive, forgive us. us. So may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, Bring us his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Okay. We're going to stand and declare our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in me? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, Jesus Christ? Who took human nature, died for us, and rose again. You do believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? Do you believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down while we have our church family news read to us this morning by our vicar. <laughs> it's changed space. Oh, look at that. Uh, brilliant to see you all here today. Welcome. Um, we like to sit at the back row, my friend, don't we? That's every single church ever. I do the same when I go to church. Um, good to be with you. My name is Chris. If you don't know the vicar. Uh, here and at uh, Church of the Saviour. Um, all our midweek groups are restarting. They've all restarted there. Our Bible study, home groups, uh, things like that. Uh, if you're not part of a midweek Bible study group or, or home group and you'd like to, come and chat to me. We'd love to welcome you to one. They run pretty much every day of the week. They're a great chance to get deeper into the Bible and 
and get to know other people better as well. Now, the Monday group, which Duncan and Jackie were, has changed time. It was at 11.45 on a Monday morning. It's now at 11 at Church of the Saviour. So that's something that you could make. You could talk to uh, Duncan uh, or Jackie about that. Uh, we were accosting the blokes as they came in. We got some of you at all. Uh, we're having a men's curry night, uh, 30th of September. Uh, if you can pay a five pound deposit, we can book a room. Uh, hope for the private room together. Uh, 7.30 on Thursday the 30th. Great chance just to uh, get together as blokes when we hear about uh, what God's been doing in one of our members' lives as well. When I was a 20 year, 21 year old bloke, a while ago now, I moved up, moved back to, to Preston after, uh, after university. And I did something called the ministry training course in Leyland. Well, we had a look at the Bible and it taught me how to understand the Bible better, uh, teach things the road really to be coming here. Um, but it's on offer to anyone who wants to go deeper into what the Bible says. And uh, they do a daytime course and they also do an evening course. And the evening course is online on Tuesday nights. So that's most Tuesdays uh, during the year, starting at the end of September. So if you wanted to get a bit more Bible knowledge, be part of a course to increase that knowledge, uh, then uh, come talk to me about how you might sign up for that. Do join us tonight for Sunday at 7 here uh, at this church. It will also be live streamed and on Zoom. And if you'd like to give uh, at the end of the service, at the start, there's contact us giving available. And you know the church attendance register is available. Uh, in the fire as well. Please uh, write legibly uh, to mark your attendance. Yeah. Now, look at that. Who are those people? You don't often see us dressed up like that, do you? And I think Phil mentioned at the start our readers, what they're called licensed lay ministers. They're the guys who lead the service and preach uh, and help me. We'll re licensed on Sunday. Could they stand up? They're here. We've got we've got Phil, we've got Jeff, we've got Duncan. John uh, tends to uh, be at Church of the Saviour. Uh, we're so grateful for all you do. You're great colleagues, we love you teaching God's word to us, and thank you for all your service. Should we give them a clap? <laughs> and a reminder that you don't stop serving the Lord when you retire here. You stop getting paid. Uh, the parents and toddler group at Ewood's community down at the uh, stadium uh, has restarted uh, on Wednesday mornings at 9.15. Uh, Nan's the person to talk to about that. Lisa. Just from last week, um, the ladies' class meeting on Wednesday we think it was a success. And uh, I do have spare kids here, so I'll my hands again. I've come to church with orders to buy some loving the hearts for my wife. <laughs> now, young people, um, it's been a while since uh, we had uh, Sunday school, hasn't it? And uh, the older group is doing some of the New City Catechism, a number of questions to help them understand the Bible better and change their hearts and minds. We're going to have a look at the next question, but first, I've got some questions for you. What does this sign mean, and why is it good to obey that law? Go on, Isaac. Top speed is 30. Why is it good to obey that law? Less chance of getting killed. Yeah. Less chance of getting fined. I won't ask you to put your hand up and be fine for driving too fast. <laughs> Why might that be a good rule to obey? <laughs> Go and ask it. So you don't die. Yeah, you see them often on quarries, don't you? And things like that. It's good to obey that rule. It's for your safety. <laughs> 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 I 
What do you think that rule is? The back. Dark edges. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of these. There you go. What's that one? You want to know what that, that, that rule is? Go on, Zara. What's that? That's it. All oh, right. Just stretching. No smoking. This is no smoking in the hospital. So uh, you don't want to uh, make ill people look a bit ill. So we're looking, the young people looking at the law. And then they just spend quite a lot of time looking at God's law over these coming months. And the question is, what does God's law require? How do you summarize what God wants of us? And the answer is this that we love God with all our hearts. Know our soul is soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. So, shall we, uh, shall we say that with the action? So, we love God with all our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and we love our neighbors as ourselves. So, what does God's law require? That we love our God with all our hearts, soul, And we're going to have our all age uh, song now after this uh, so refresh. We'll go out. So, if you'd like to stand, <coughs> some action. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, can I uh, invite William up, please? There you are, you're behind me. You use this main uh, microphone here, that's all right. Um, we thought we'd interview William a little bit here um, to find out a bit about you and what's going on next. So, do you, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm William, I'm 18, and um, in a couple of weeks, going to be going off to university in New York. Excellent. 
Fantastic. So um, it's great to have you here. You've um, you've sort of been with the church all your life, yeah. and uh, after the teenage years, I guess it's quite hard for uh, Christians, and uh, and we are always um, seeing people uh, in church. So, what's helped you uh, keep going through those teenage years, the age of eighteen? Um, so I think it's just a combination of different things, and obviously, just coming to church has been a great help of things and being able to help uh, lead in various aspects of church life. I think clubs at school as well and youth groups and house groups have been involved in over the years. And I think also some of the summer camps I've been on have had the opportunity to lead on some of those. And also particularly probably the opportunity to go out to Estonia a couple of years ago has really helped strengthen my faith. And it was an outreach mission type thing and based around music. And that was a really encouraging thing as well. Excellent. I'm sure your parents have helped as well. Yeah, I definitely need support from parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, that's actually that, that's fantastic. And we've loved having you as part of our church family and being involved with things. Um, you briefly said what you're doing next. You're going to give us a bit more detail about what's next. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm going to York Uni and, and I'm going to study English literature there. Um, but while I'm out there, I want to get involved in different societies, including my Christian union. And, also, just hopefully get involved in the church over there as well. Excellent. So you're not too far away. You can mm. still sort of bring your dirty washing back. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's an easy <laughs> trade. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Excellent. Um, we'd love to pray for you. Yeah. Next stage. stage. Um, so how, how can we pray for you? I think just that um, I settle in there really well and just make some good friends there. And I think also just that my faith continue to go strong while I'm at uni as well and have the opportunity to share it with other people as well. Brilliant. Now what you said, Jim? English it. English it, which is my wife did. Yeah. Excellent. Let's pray for the uh, room, shall we? Well, thank you so much uh, for holding what you've in your hands. Uh, thank you for keeping him strong and straight. Thank you for all those different things that have helped that. And Lord, as he heads off to your to study English literature, we pray you strengthen him that even from that first day you're getting to know people and making friends, that you really bless him in his studies, and that you'd use him as a man of God to serve you in that city. Uh, please direct him towards the church that will be supportive of him uh, and to Christian union where he can serve and share your good news. So please bless him and keep him in your grace. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you. And just tap to William at the end. Do you want to find out a bit more? <laughs> Excellent. Do you want to take a seat? Oh, no, you didn't read it, aren't you? Brilliant. Do you want to grab a Bible? I'm going to read it. Oh, so the first reading is um, Psalm 1. It's going to be found in the Church Bible. It's on page 543. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sins, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever it do he does prosper. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff, but the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our second reading can be found in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. It can be found in the Church Bibles on page 1092. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day he was taken up to heaven, 
after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he had shown himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or days the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So do uh, keep that open, please, uh, as we have a look at that Bible passage together. Uh, the BBC have got a programme I don't know if you watched it. Anyone ever watched that? Yeah, who do you think you are? This is what it says. Lost connections and unfamiliar histories are revealed as celebrities trace their family trees. Discover stories of courage, joy, sacrifice and resilience. Everyone has a tale to tell. And it must be a successful show because uh, it's run for 17 series. So people obviously wanted to watch it. <coughs> It goes back to people's roots. Um, my wife and I at the moment are watching a programme called This Is Us. Uh, there's someone uh, in the programme who was adopted as a baby uh, and he had a great upbringing, but, but he's doing all he can uh, to find his biological uh, father. He wants to go back to his roots. He wants to know where he came from. And there's something interesting and informative, isn't there, about knowing where we're from. It helps us get more of a sense of belonging and form our identity. It explains maybe why we do things a certain way. And it helps us to develop and grow in the future. Well, this term, we as a church are gonna go back to our New Testament roots as a church. We're looking at the book of Acts and we're seeing how the church was formed what it stood for, how it grew, what it did, what's it all about. And I hope that as we do that, as we, hope, as we go back to our roots as a church, it will help us as we sort of restart church in a way after lockdown. Now, when I say church, I don't mean the building, I don't mean the vicar and the PCC, I don't mean the denomination, I mean the Christians gathered together here and all over the country, you are the church, the people. So what do we do? see about the roots of the church in Acts? We see it's, uh, well, the very first thing we see in Acts chapter one is that it is a church rooted in mission. It is a missionary church. Now, I don't know what you think when I say the word mission. Maybe you think about um, someone digging wells for poor people, or, or you think a mission is about going to other countries, going far away, or maybe you've got more negative connotations, sort of ideas of imperialism and domination. Maybe you think mission is something the holy people do, not for me. We see in this first section of Acts that what Christian mission looks like, and we're gonna see three aspects of what it is. We're going to see the message, the means, and the mission field. The first thing we see is the message. The message. 
is all about Jesus. Can you think of any films where the sequel was better than the prequel or as good as the prequel? Maybe. Did you ever watch the Matrix films? And everyone loved that first one. And then the second one came up and I never thought, oh, it's rubbish. Yeah, there's a new Matrix film coming out soon. Well, Acts is the sequel to Luke. Luke wrote Luke's Gospel and addressed it to a guy called Theophilus. And now he's writing Acts. And he says right at the start, Luke, when I wrote my gospel, it was all about Jesus. And Acts, this is all about Jesus as well. This is going to be about Jesus. And he talks about Jesus' resurrection. He starts by talking about how Jesus didn't stop after he died, but his work continued. So have a look at verse 3 if you've got your Bible in front of you. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Jesus' mission is continuing. And even though we see that Jesus ascends into heaven in this chapter, his mission still continues in the world. The message about Jesus still goes out. Now, if you're anything like me, you get bombarded with messages every day. If you ever come home after a holiday, you open up the emails, like 400 of them, aren't there? And a big pile of letters and posts waiting at your door. And uh, maybe you, you go through these emails and it says, delete, 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 delete. Ooh, maybe just leave that for later, delete, delete. I need to reply to that. And we're always making judgment calls. What messages do we listen to? Is it worthy of my time? Do I invest in it? Is it important? And what do we do with the message of Christianity? Christianity is just a bunch of rules to follow. I'm sure we'd just delete, wouldn't we? Or if it was just about a message who was about someone who was a good teacher who lived 2,000 years ago, we'd probably not bother delete. But Luke says here, Christianity is a message about a a saviour, someone who conquered death, someone who can bring you into a kingdom forever. This is a message worth listening to. This is a message worth sharing. The message about Jesus, the risen, conquering king and saviour. And we're going to see this is a message that changes the world. So the foundation of mission, foundation of the church, the message of Jesus, that's what's important. So if we're thinking we want to do mission, it's got to involve talking about Jesus. It can involve doing good things, it can involve being kind, but it needs to involve the message of Jesus. That is the key. So that's the, the message, Jesus. That's what mission is about. But here's the thing. Jesus then goes on to say, you can't share this message in your own strength. We were at, at this li we licensing, do you remember? And uh, the, uh, the readers, licensed lay ministers, they were told they had to do all this stuff. And then the liturgy said, but you can't. <laughs> you can't do it in your own strength. You might say, it's mission impossible. But if you've watched any of the Mission Impossible films, you'll know that actually it does become possible with the right means. That's the second thing, same thing we see, the means of mission, the Spirit. The message is shared through the power of the Spirit. And in that <laughs> liturgy, you can't do it in your own strength. You need the Spirit's help. You need God's help. And so have a look at verse 4 in, uh, in, your, in your Bibles. On one occasion, while uh, Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, 
which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, don't even, don't even bother trying to spread this message for the time being. You can't do it. You need to wait for the Spirit to come. It's been promised time and time again. And the Spirit will give you the power to achieve a mission. Now, Jesus goes on to say that in order to send the Spirit, he must first ascend into heaven. So Jesus goes up into heaven in verse 9, and it's from there that he sends the Spirit on his people. The Spirit that empowers mission. He takes, the Spirit takes the message and uses it to transform people. Now, I don't know about you, if you've ever tried to uh, talk to people about Jesus, I wonder how it's gone. Um, sometimes we can put quite a lot of pressure on ourselves, can't we? And we just think, oh, well, if I just say the right thing at the right time, in just the right way, that person will respond, yeah? But then when we actually try it, we just sort of like splurge and talk rubbish and forget to say important things or are really unclear. I'm like that sometimes. That's why I write everything down for my sermons. But actually, God says he'll use that. He takes our words about Jesus, no matter how garbled and ineloquent they are, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he can use them to transform people's lives. It's God who enables a mission to happen. Now, for some people, maybe some people here today, there might have been a moment where you just got it. And you just thought, yeah, I want to be a Christian. I want to trust Jesus. I want to be transformed. And God's Spirit has just almost turned the lights on in your life. For some, it might have been a gradual thing. You can't say an exact day when I became a Christian. Maybe you were brought up in a Christian home. But at some point in that journey, God's Spirit has convicted you that you need to trust Jesus and turn from your sin. Either way, that is God's spirit at work. That is the way the mission happens. That's the way people are brought into God's kingdom. So we've seen the message, Jesus, the means, the spirit. When we share the message of Jesus, God takes it by his power and transforms people's lives as he sees fit. And then thirdly, the mission field. What is the mission field? Have a look at verse 6. So the disciples don't quite get it. So when they met together, they asked Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They're just thinking about Israel, their locality, the, the area around them. They're thinking too small. So you ever watch Jaws? They go hunting, don't they? They throw fish out of the back to catch this, this shark, and the shark appears. <laughs> they thought too small and the disciples are thinking too small and Jesus says you're going to need a bigger gospel you're going to need to think bigger this is a message that is going everywhere have a look at verse 8 this is the key verse in Acts <clears throat> he says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He's saying this message is going global, going everywhere, not just the city, Jerusalem, you're in, uh, the middle of, or Judea, the province that you're in, not even Samaria, the neighboring country, those people you hate and think are a bit half bred. 
No, no, this, this message is going everywhere. Africa, Italy, Spain. We see that message going out in the book of Acts, even to the United Kingdom. This mission field is the world. So what about us? What will it look like for us to see Jesus' mission and to take this message about Jesus, empowered by the Spirit, to the people around us? Maybe we want to start with our local communities. You want to know what lies on the left? That's Longshore School, Church of the Saviour Parish. And on the right, that's our parish, isn't it? Part of it, it would part. Gospel, the good news, the messages for people in our locality, our Jerusalem. We might go to the surrounding area further. Samaria, what might the equivalent be for us? Or maybe there's parts of Blackburn we wouldn't normally go into, just like the Jews wouldn't normally go into Samaria. People, people have a different religion, a different way of doing things than us. Jesus says this message about Jesus is for them. How can we be reaching out to those communities? And then what about the world? This message going to the ends of the earth. We have mission partners. We have uh, mission partners in uh, the Davies in France of the Bells in Croatia. We have the Marshalls, or actually having the child since that picture, in East Asia. And we support them, we want to pray for them. Part of our money we give at church goes to them. Could you consider taking this message global? We've gone back to our roots. Our roots, well, the only reason we're here is because of that mission that someone took, that those first apostles took the message of Jesus, powered by the Spirit, to the ends of the earth. That's where we've come from. So that's a mission we want to get behind as well. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for those who've shared the message with us. We thank you that the message of Jesus is wonderful. A message of salvation, a message of forgiveness, a message of eternal life. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to get to grips with that message and to share that message in our workplaces, in our schools, in our homes. Maybe further afield, be willing to go to different communities, maybe even different countries. That the good news about Jesus will continue to go global. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Stand up and sing our head.
Come to our time of prayer. Margaret, please want to pray with us. Go forth and tell. I was at school, used to say to the kids, if the disciples hadn't gone forth and told, we would be sitting here today because they did their job properly, as Chris said, and it spread in the world. But as I also said to the children, if you don't go forth and tell, it'll stop you. Mm. So we are commissioned to go and tell in small ways and big ways. So let's pray with that thought in mind. Well, the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked will come. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning knowing we are part of the body of Christ. And that each of us is very important to you. As we try to live up to your command, and we should we love one another as you love us, we acknowledge that without your love, we would be nothing. We give thanks for the many blessings and gifts that you've given to us. We are charged by you to be good stewards of all these gifts. And we need your guidance to show us where and how we can be best stewards. By the guidance of your Holy Spirit within us, we pray that we can show and share and tell of your love to us as we go about our daily lives and about our mission for you. Lord, in your mercy. This world is full of places where there's distress, lack of food and water, lack of medical supplies and nursing care, war and unrest. Lord, we lift before you all those who are in positions of leadership. We pray that they will seek to act with compassion, fairness and humility to feed the hungry, nurse the sick and bring peace to the world. We pray for our armed forces as they seek to find ways to calm the unrest and certain areas of the world. We ask that you keep them safe as you return into their families. We pray for the Queen and the Royal Family, the government, the local councils, but as they go about their daily work, they will be guided by you to do always what is right and fair and to meet the needs of all people. Lord, in your mercy, we are. Father, we bring before you our families and those close to us. We ask that you will be at work in all our lives so that your light and love will shine through us and so bring others closer to you. Father, we pray for those who teach others. For all involved in every aspect of education, 
May they have wisdom, integrity, patience and commitment to share all that is good and right. We pray for all our children and young people in education, and especially we pray for those just starting a new stage in their education, starting school or moving on to secondary school. Be with them as they step out into the whole new environment. For those like William preparing to study away from home for the first time in their lives, guide, encourage, and support them all with your love, Lord, in their next step on life's journey. Lord, we know you say. We pray for all who are called out into the wider mission of the world, all aid organisations, missionaries, and medical personnel. May the work they do reach and benefit many by providing materials, support, and showing your love and spiritual guidance in the world. We pray especially for our link link missions who saw the pictures this morning, the Bells in Croatia, the marshals out in the Far East, and the Davies in France. Also to hold, we pray for all who give comfort on our streets at night, like Thomas House and Nancy and the food bank staff. And we pray for all our Christians against poverty too. Our clients, the shield, the gardens for her, and our uh, um, defenders. I think we call them, and our defenders. May the work they do reach out to men so that their suffering will be rejoiced, and your light will shine amongst men, and they will find you love for them. Lord, in your mercy. There are many we know who are suffering in pain from them. Drug addicts, the lonely, those who feel unloved, the bereaved, those who feel guilty, and those who are sick. We lift them all to you this morning, knowing it is you that can heal and bring comfort to anyone who's in distress today. And we particularly lift before you Sandra, Val, Kathy, Neil, Alan, Jack, and Claire. And in a moment's quiet, anybody more personal to us who needs God's healing touch today. Surround them all with your love, Lord, and bless them with comfort and healing. Lord, in your mercy, we are Many families will be grieving for a loved one lost this week or in time like that. So we pray this morning for all who grieve for the loss of life. We think particularly for the friends and family of Margaret Linda, who's the wife of the reader at St Andrew of Birmingham, and she's died this last week after a family of cancer. Heavenly Father, comfort and heal all those who grieve and give them courage to live for their lives. Lord, in your eyes, we rejoice in the fact that you are the Lord of our lives, and we give thanks that we can come here safely. And worship you each day. We thank you for all your blessings and pray that as we leave here, empowered by your word, we will be able to pass on your love to those we come into contact with during the coming weeks. So we join our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. <coughs> our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For kingdom, power, glory, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Our closing hymn, we're going to stand on the same now. And then afterwards, uh, you don't need to dash off because at the back of the hall, we've got tea and coffee, uh, which we would like you to sample. Uh, you, you can go to the back and uh, make yourself a brew. There's flasks and what have you, and cups and milk and everything. Uh, and then if you sit down rather than walking around, that would be a lot better. Uh, but it'd be lovely to have a little bit of fellowship and a chat with someone who you may be not chatting with for quite a while. So that's after the service. But we'll sing this final hymn, Jesus, Hope of the Nations.
Let's just have a closing prayer. Uh, if you want to give to the work of God, which I hope you do, because it's always a, a real blessing. Uh, there's the, at the side there as you're going out, there's the box where you can put your money in. Or if you're high tech like myself, <laughs> you can uh, do it on this. Uh, you can even pay on your phone. What's it coming to? Uh, but there we are. Side, you can pay whichever way you want, but uh, just it's, just remember, you friends, it's good to get okay. And uh, so, you uh, you could just make it there. Let's just close in prayer, everybody. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we spent together. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you for the fact that Jesus has been lifted up this morning and uh, placed on that pedestal where he will be for all eternity. And so we pray that you bless each and every home that was entered here. And may your Holy Spirit, uh, that we've been hearing about this morning, uh, be present in our homes. And there may be places where people will be blessed and enriched. And so dismiss us now, Lord, with your blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow at all, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just turn this over to the Lord, shall we? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Lord bless you. Thank you for coming.